Good morning, everyone. So the past couple of days, I have been working really hard to get some soaps done, um, working on cold process soaps. Um, I have a whole bunch of brand new stuff coming out. Um, I made some bath bombs and there's more soaps that I've packaged up and ready to go. I just made some basic bars, um, trying to blow out some old, not old stock, but stuff that I had bought that I thought I was going to use. And then I decided to tra transfer back over to my cold um, process soap. I actually like the cold process soap better. Um, however, I've got some new scents that I've been using and two of them completely seized up on me. So I'm going to show you um, what I did to save those soaps because you can reuse them. Um, the, fortunately, the two soaps that did seize up on me were two that I'm going to use for the house. So it really doesn't matter. Um, and just so you know, my videos are going to be raw and unedited. I just don't feel like editing them. I think you guys should see what the process is live, and, and I hope you enjoy what I'm making today. Um, I'm going to be doing um, another um, oil. Um, I'm testing my oils out, but I'm also making stuff for my house right now. So today I'm going to do a spiritual one. I'm going to do um, a Nag Champa. I talked about this in one of my previous um, videos. Um, I love this specific scent and this scent will be coming out in other products too if this soap does not seize on me today and actually works then i will probably take like a small like the sample bars out for myself because i don't use a lot of it when i'm doing my spiritual work um but i will um then uh put the the rest of the bars up on the sale i know there's a lot of people that really like this scent i love this scent and i want to be able to do it from there so today I'm not only making a soap for me, but I'm making a soap for you if it doesn't seize up on me like the other two did. <laughs> so we're going to try this again. Um, I'm not sure if it's the sense that I'm getting from where I'm getting them. I don't know why this is happening. I did a little bit of research yesterday to find out, well, is my formulation wrong? Well, no, soapcalc.com is who I use for my um, oils and my calculations. And according to that calculation, it was right, so it shouldn't have seized up. So then I got back on the internet yesterday and did a little bit more research and found out that um, one of them, the jasmine, which was, I'll show you the bar here in a second that I made, it's typical for seasoning up and it has to do with the chemistry in the, uh, the oils themselves. So I will not be using jasmine in my um, future uh, work at all. Um, I will use that for my bath bombs. Um, I like it better in my bath bombs anyway. And so that's just the way it goes. So here is the bar that I did yesterday. And yes, I don't have gloves on because this is for me. Um, this is what happened. The bar completely seized up on me and it's really, really ugly. And, but like I said, I was, this is my first tester batch with my new oils. And um, I decided that I wanted to do this one for myself anyway. So it was not a big deal. Um, it's a bar of soap. I'm going to, throw it in the back. Nobody's going to see it. I'm going to use it here and there when I want to. My husband's going to use it. He absolutely loves Jasmine. So I thought, okay, fine. Let's just do this as my first tester and see what happens. It just so happens that across the board, um, Jasmine is one of those that actually does seize up on your oil, on your stuff. So if you're using Jasmine, be really careful with it and know that you only have a really, I mean, a little short time to work with it. I literally had less than five minutes to work with it. It seized like that. And I on, honestly wish I had sh had it videotaped yesterday. I was going to, but I wasn't feeling good yesterday. My allergies hit me really hard. And we've got rain here today, so that's why I'm doing this. Um, doing a new batch today with the Nag Shampa to show you guys how this works. So I didn't show you how to do it, but within five minutes of me putting the oil into the batch it completely seized on me so what I did is I just simply took the um, batter once I was able to get it mixed because I was able to get everything mixed up and put together I had to hand mix it like crazy and that's what I ended up getting but it just there was just not enough time for me to really work with it that's why the bar looks so ugly but I was able to get it into my um, uh, thing very well I was trying to do a two color yesterday with it and the other one, which was the purple that I put in there, it completely failed. Um, I thought if I put it in the microwave for a little bit, that it, if I warm it up a little more, maybe that'll seize it down. But that made it even worse. And I ended up with this like powdered soap. 
that I just ended up throwing the bat that part of the batch away. That's why the bar is so low. I mean, it, it's only like halfway here because of that. I just threw it away. There, it wasn't a soap. There was no way I could save it. It was gone, and I was devastated. But then I realized, you know what? The rest of it, I'm not going to do that with. I'm just going to really quickly pack it in here and get it done. <clears throat> and that is the result. So this is my jasmine. Remember, jasmine oil seizes on you. In other words, what that means is it accelerates the batter really fast. So you only have like a five minute window, if even that, to be able to work with it. So you have to do a thin trace with it, I found. And I may do another sample bar later on down the road and see if I can actually get a recipe for you guys that can work. But let me work it out because you can use it. It's just you have to know when to stop with it and when to get it in your molds. And there's a time frame that you have to work with. Another trick, a trick that I learned in doing something like that, that somebody showed me yesterday on one of the videos, and I'm really glad. Um, thank you, Uncle John. Uh, I think his name's Uncle John. Um, man, what a great set of videos. If you guys want to go watch him, I know he's like redneck, down to earth. I absolutely love watching his videos because he's so real. And he's, um, I really admire the work that he's done and, and some of the things that he said yesterday, it really rang true to who I am as a soap maker and who I've been in the past as a soap maker. So it kind of like brought all of that back together and what I'm trying to do here with my soap. So after I watched that video, I realized, yeah, this happens. <laughs> And you know what, I may just, I may cut a couple slices off of this and, and sell it as an ugly soap and see what you guys want, if you guys want an ugly soap. So I don't know, I haven't made a decision yet, but um, anyway, so back to what. So if you want some really good advice, honestly, go watch his videos. He's been doing this for, I don't know how many years, probably 10, 15. Um, I absolutely love watching his videos and he really, he has some myths and dismiss and it's like logic. And he actually shows you, you know, what some of these people are saying on some of these videos isn't true. And so I'm going to show you part of that technique, but then part of my own technique today. Because um, I'm finally getting back in the groove of making soaps. And so I'm going to show you my technique today and how I do it. So anyway, this is my Jasmine um, uh, Seized Up Soap. It does smell really, really good. Um, I'm going to put a little crystals on the top and I put some um, rocks with some crystal on it or echo friendly because <clears throat> all of my soaps are all natural um, even though because of the soap industry I can't say that on there but the ingredients are listed and I do that for a reason so that you guys know that what you're getting in your soap is really all natural if at all possible if I do end up with an organic product it will be labeled as organic but the whole product will not be organic unfortunately there's just a lot of ingredients in my soap that is not organic I can't get them organic I wish I could honestly they just they're I just I either I can't find them or they're just not available because they're not made as organic products so I tried anyway so this is my jasmine soap we're gonna cut this up later on um, or I'll cut it up off camera and maybe come back later or I, I don't know we'll see what happens um, it sees how it's we'll see how well this soap goes. Um, bear with me We're here for the next hour and a half to two hours as we soap with me raw and unedited and I do have pets in the house They are down and sleeping at the moment That's why I'm doing this so early in the morning because they don't really get active until they're till um, DJ gets home in the afternoon so hopefully We'll have no interruptions, <laughs> but if we do my door is right back there And I'm just gonna let them out really quick and go and let them come back in and just so you know, even though I do have pets in the house, I do soap very carefully. Um, I do make my bath bonds very carefully. I can't help the fact that I have animals in the house. I don't have a separate studio. I am in my kitchen, as you can see behind me, which is probably a little messy right now because I tried to clean up last night, but I didn't get everything put away. But, um, and then I am close to a naval base. And it sounds like they might be bombing. So if you hear bombing in the background, please do not panic or get upset about it. I do live close to a ba base and we are very close to their bombing. And occasionally we do get that coming through. So I just want you guys to know that um, Fort Lewis is where I'm close to. Um, they do bomb during the day and at night. I was up all night last week 
because they were bombing at night. It's just, we're getting used to it. We're used to it. We hear it all the time and it's not a big deal. Um, we do watch the news occasionally to make sure that there is something really not going on because we are close to Seattle and, and where all that is. And so my nose is itching, sorry. And so we do, you know, it just is what it is. So if you hear bombing in the background, do not panic. It's just Fort Lewis and they're running their exercises and that's normal for us. So that's really cool. We were happy about that. Anyway, so this is my Jasmine soap. I did have another one I tried to do. Um, I'm actually surprised. This was not what I was going for in my soap. This is my second soap I did. Um, I'm not going to name this one yet. Um, I used an oil here again that apparently had vanilla in it and I was unaware of it when I did it. But I'm kind of liking the way it turned out. I'm not a brown soap person, but I actually like this one. The scent came through very lightly for some reason, and I used the recipe as it was, but here again, you can never know. Sometimes uh, sometimes uh, they come across, sometimes they don't, but I like this because it looks like a snowy mountain. So I'll play around with the name on it. It was really surprising, the, the actual oil that I did. This one was supposed to be a purple. <laughs> Um, I was doing it as a dark purple, but it ended up this really pretty brown muted thing. And this is the second one that I seized up, but this one didn't seize up as fast. So I was really happy about that. And I do know why this one seized up. Um, I actually over mixed this batter on accident. Um, I simply got distracted by the animals and wasn't paying attention and that can happen sometime. And so I over mixed this one and this one seized up fairly quickly. Um, I was able here again, I'll, I'll show you this. You can see the little hole down here. I was able to get it into there, but it wouldn't shake itself down and I couldn't get all the corners done. And, um, so I ended up just with this bar, but I actually, it's got some yellowing in it too, but I like the way it turned out. I'm really happy with this bar. So, you know, sometimes our mistakes can turn out to be some of the best soaps that we ever make. So don't discount those, um, batters there's still soap um and i have honestly i don't know why but i've gone into stores and found soaps that were like damaged or you know whatever and i bought them and brought them home because i just want the scent i don't care what they look like they're in my bathroom they're in my tub you know they're gonna get mushy they're gonna get yucky they're gonna get that's just what soap does and i have no problem with that i guess it's just because i'm down to earth so much that this is awesome, but this looks like a little mountain peak. I don't know if I can twist it up. I'm gonna turn it over. Some of the little rocks on top, but I put some little crystals on there. That's my signature topping. Um, I'm just gonna build up the center and then like do little mountains. I do live right behind Mount Rainier. I wish I could show you, but it's completely clouded over and we can't see it. Perhaps I'll do a video outside one day and, and make some soaps outside and or maybe some bath bombs and show you guys what um, our view from Mount Rainier is because it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, I literally, I walk out my door and go down the hill a little bit and I have a complete view of Mount Rainier. It's so beautiful out here that I absolutely love it. So I'm coming to you from Roy, Washington, which is awesome. That's where I make my soap. Um, and then there you go. If you want to help me name this, I will leave it open and you guys tell me what it is. It's a floral, sweet floral scent. Hmm, kind of got a weird, kind of got a weird scent. I can't re mean, uh, name it. Maybe I'll just call this a name in this, because the scent really isn't that strong in it. I got some purple streaks in there. Purple and yellow and some fun colors. I'm not sure what I'm going to call this one. But anyway, um, I don't know. I've got some ideas. You tell me what you want me to name this as. I'll comment bed down below and um, we'll get this out there. Um, maybe I'll just put this in as a plain soap because the soap isn't coming through very well. All right, I'm going to rewash my hands to get the soap stuff off my hands so I can put my gloves on. I will be right back. All right, one of the things that I do do a lot when I am doing um, my soaps is I do make sure that everything is clean. I clean my hands um, constantly all the time. As you can see, my hair is pulled back, so there is no hair that ends up in here. Um, I have long hair. I just cut it the other day, so it was down my back and almost to my 
my rear and I said I need to get the weight off my head it was giving me headaches and because um, I have very thick hair so anyway um, so let's get on with our soap I'm gonna move these two soaps out of the way so I have a little bit more room here we're gonna just put these two aside and then I'm gonna move a little bit of stuff around here so that we can get this done one thing I like to do um, when I am soaping is I do um, put my soaps, uh, my ingredients off my counter when I'm done. Um, I have a little, this is a little um, like mini table here that I have set up. Uh, a ca um, I cannot think of the name of what, it, what they call it, but anyway, brain freeze for some reason, I don't know what, but I leave Ooh, it looks like my cat wants back out again. <laughs> so anyway, I do have a counter. So as I'm cleaning and I'm using my ingredients, I do put them away. That way I know for me, and this may help you too, is I do know that my ingredients have been used in my items. So when I put my item and I measure it and I put it in where I'm going to do, I put it away right away. I get rid of it and I get it out of my way. That way I know for a fact that my oil and my soaps are, I've actually used that product. In other words, if I put my color in, I'm gonna go put it away or down on the floor away from me. If I use my hemp oil, I'm gonna put it down and away. If I use my oil, I put it down and away. I get it off my counter. That way I have more room to work because once I get start to do the final steps of coloring, and then molding, I wanna have enough room to be able to work with that. If I, you can't really see what I have here, everything is around me, all of my ingredients that are going into my soap is right here in front of me. And I cannot, you know, work right now very easily. So as I use an ingredient, I get it off my counter and I put it away. My sodium hydroxide does go behind me on my counter because my animals do not get on my counter and I do not want them to get into this. And just so you know, I store it extra dry. I haven't, I'm out of plastic bags right now, but I am gonna get another one. I'm gonna double bag this so that I know that this is, stays dry. If you get this sodium hydroxide dry or wet, it's gonna volcano. If you remember when you were doing, um, when you were kids and you were doing the volcanoes for science class, you put the baking soda in, then you put your other ingredient in and then it just exploded. Well, that's what's gonna happen to this bottle if it gets wet. So it's very imperative that your sodium hydroxide stays dry at all times. I make sure that my surface areas are clean because if I get one little crystal on the ground or on my counter, it's gonna go in volcano and I don't want that to happen. Um, I'm sure one little crystal isn't gonna volcano that much. Maybe I'll do a tester and I'll show you guys how that works. Um, I might, I'm going to put that on a to-do list and I'm going to show you the effects of what happens when this gets wet and do it in a safe area. I have um, a very large area that I live in and I can very safely dig a hole in my dirt and I can, I can do that. So I think that's what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what this actually does when it gets wet for you guys. So you can be safe. The other thing is, is I don't want to get it on my hands. So the minute I got the bottle, I put it in this plastic bag. It's safe for me to work this way. I do wear gloves. I have them right here. I just, I'm being a little extra careful with this. I do have very sensitive skin. My cat's whining at me, I don't know why. There she goes. So anyway, um, I am very skin sensitive of it, as I've said in my previous videos, and so I wanna be really careful with what my hands. I did notice that just um, working after I had done this and put, every, put it away, and I must have gotten something on my wrist because my wrist was a little bit irritated. I don't know if it was because it was rubbing or what what the issue was, but um, it's gone away. So and there's no burn there. So whatever it was, um, whatever it was that I touched when I was doing this, I have to be extra careful. Notice I have long sleeves on. I may switch to short sleeves here in a little while, just because it's warm in the house right now. Even though it's pouring down rain out there, my house seems to be a little on the warm side right now. So um, and it's not because of the heat, because we had it down this morning. So I'm not sure what going what's going on there. So. Um, Let's move on. So soap recipes, I'm not going to give you my recipe. Um, I'm using hemp oil and hemp butter. I worked really hard to get this recipe perfect. Um, 
I'm going to make sure that that recipe stays hidden only because it is my own recipe and I don't really feel like sharing it. Um, a couple places that have some really, really good recipes, um, Uncle John's, um, if you check here on YouTube, I absolutely love his recipe and I thought I would try it. He uses basic ingredients, canola oil, the sodium hydroxide, and just a few other oils that are basic that you can get right out of the store, so it's very easy. Um, he uses canola oil instead of olive oil. I love his soaps. I actually want to purchase a couple of them because I absolutely love what he's doing, and I just want to test them out, and maybe I'll order from a couple of the soap companies and show you and give you my opinion on them because I'm so impressed with some of these guys. Um, Jerica Zimmerman is another one that I've gotten her recipe off of. Um, she's awesome. I absolutely love her videos. They're so good and so informative. Um, she has a couple really good recipes on hers. Um, and then there's Soap Queen. Shout out to her. I absolutely love her stuff. And I just picked up, I'm, I've connected with Kenna and she is with, um, oh, I can't think of her website. Soapmaking.com I think is who she is. She's brand new to me, so forgive me, but Kenna, shout out to her. She's been, um, we've been emailing back and forth. She's extremely helpful. Um, I'm super impressed with um, her and her response. Um, she does take a couple of days because we're still some places where I think where she's at, she's still on COVID lockdown. So it's hard for her to get back to her emails and stuff either. Or she's just really busy with what she does in her life. And that's awesome. I'm, I'm happy with that. But she does respond back, which I was really surprised at. I had... Um, asked a question of her she replied back to me almost immediately within within 24 hours is how quick she was so I absolutely um I'm very impressed so thank you very much Kenna for your advice and for all your help um you helped me solve the issue and I'm working forward um to fixing the issue that I had um so there's just there's just a whole lot there's royalty soaps I absolutely love her videos she doesn't I don't think she has any um I don't think she has any recipes on her website that I could find there might be and I just didn't see it but she has a ton of really cool soaps that she makes and she shows you how to make her soaps and she's just a phenomenal artist in soaps itself she's just she's really really good my bottom line is is there are a ton of recipes out on the web and you can just go and get them just go and look a lot of the artists um, do their recipes. I'm going to probably do a simple recipe and then I'll do a more complicated recipe now that I've figured out how to work so calm for you guys and probably come up with some new stuff for you guys. But that's going to be down the road. Sneeze. <coughs> Forgive me, my allergies have hit full on and I have not taken my allergy medicine yet today. I may break a little bit and go get it if it gets too bad. <laughs> I'm so sorry you guys anyway so um so coming down the line just in the future for me I have some new stuff coming out um, I'm gonna do a whole video on that in just a little probably later on this afternoon or later on today I'll do a video on that because I haven't posted a video in a couple of in a couple of weeks only because I've been so busy um, in the studio um, and I've taken the week off this week to kind of focus on you know working on my soaps and getting some stuff done and, and getting it up um, I've come up with an issue in my personal life where I may have to shut down temporarily, um, but I'm waiting for um, some information um, from someone to tell me if that's going to happen or not. And if I do, I don't know when I will be back, but I will continue to do as many videos as I can and I will see what else I can do in the meantime. So for now, here's how we're going to soap. Moving on. So I have my, I'm going to put this down a little bit so that you guys can see. Forgive my hand. There we go. Can you guys see there? All right. So I have a metal bowl, sodium hydroxide. I know I've seen people mix it in in uh, different forms. Um, I use this only. I do not use um, plastic. It's hydrogen. Hydrogen um, sodium hydroxide is very ca um, caustic. If it touches your hands, it will burn you. If, it, if you have animals and pets, you want to be really careful because sometimes the crystals can fall out. Most people recommend using flakes. I went with crystal this time only because it was what I could find. Um, I did partner with a new company and I'm going to be ordering some flakes, but I'd like to use this up first and then I'll go over to the flakes because the flakes don't static. 
the crystals do. And I found that out the hard way um, yesterday. Fortunately, none of my animals were in the house yesterday when it happened. But when I opened my bottle, I had a few that kind of floated up. So I quickly shut it down and I sat the, bo the bottle on the counter for a minute or two just to kind of let it settle down. And when I opened the bottle back up again, it, it re uh, um, relieved it. I don't know why it happened. I, I, I just, I'm a static person. So maybe when I picked up the bottle, I created some of that static through the plastic. I don't know. Um, I, you touch me sometimes and I just, I will shock you because I have so much energy running through my body. Natural energy, of course. I'm not plugged in, into an electrical outlet or anything. So, you know, that's the way it is. But, um, so I've got my metal bowl. Only mix your sodium hydroxide in a metal bowl. I know a lot of people put it in plastic. I do not recommend it. Um, only because the, for one, the sodium hydroxide gets super hot. I mean, over 200 degrees. I did one of my soaps yesterday my, and I tested it just to see actually how hot it actually got. It got over 225 degrees, I think. I know oh 220 was my top. That's really hot. Um, I don't know why it heated up that hot. We were really warm yesterday here in uh, Washington, so which is odd for us because we're usually kind of on the low side. But, you know, right now we're in the 65-ish range, so it's kind of sort of warm over here, but not too bad. So anyway, so that's why I, I use a metal bowl because this does get really hot. And I also have hot pads because I'm going to set it aside, put it on the hot pads, and let it cool down right here close to me. I'm not going to let it cool down too close, too fast. In fact, I think I may wait and do this last and just get my oils in here and then um, get that going. So let's get our oils. I'm going to put that right there. So let's get our oils going. In my recipe, I use olive oil, hemp seed oil, and a couple other oils, which I will keep quiet on that um, only because I don't want you guys to know what my recipe is. Um, my main products are hemp oil and hemp... Um, here, I'm going to set this back up. There we go. My main oils are hemp oils and butters. And so, like I said, um, I hemp butter is brand new to the market. And I did get a recipe that does work with it. And I was able to calculate it out properly with all my other oils that I have. Um, and it does work. So I'm going to use that. And that's why I'm not giving you my method of how I do this and I'm not giving you measurements because it is a it is proprietary to me so um will I get a patent on it I might I haven't decided yet um because I really haven't decided whether or not I'm going to share this with all of you yet I might down the road and give you a new recipe to use I, I might reformulate it and um, show you guys how to use hemp butter I love hemp butter um I love hemp um it's so nourishing it's so um, if you watch my other videos, I really go into it in depth in one of um, in my last video that I did, but it's very rich in nutrients. It's very rich in um, uh, omega threes and another omega. I want to say it's omega one. I think it's one and three. I can't remember the other omega, but it's rich in omega threes for sure. Antioxidants, minerals. Um, it's just really good for you as a as a body and really good for your um, skin. What is hemp seed oil? Um, hemp seed oil is the seeds of the hemp plant, uh, the cannabis plant, cannabis sativa. I can never say that word, sorry. <laughs> and it is only from the seeds. The CBD oil is from the leaves and the stems. And so that's why you get the effects of the, um, that CBD has. They're two different properties actually. And so when they squeeze, the oil the oils out of the seeds directly you get the hemp seed oil cbd when you squeeze the stems and i think it's steam processed actually i'd have to go back in i don't know much about cbd i don't get into it very often it's just not a product that i'm ever going to carry in my in my things in my area because I, I just don't want to work with it myself i i like the hemp seed oil the best and that's what i use and that's what i'm going to continue with so um, anyway, so they press the seeds and you get the hemp seed oil and it's very green in nature. You'll see as I start pouring stuff in that, um, it, it does really well. All right. So let's start measuring. I've got my crock pot here. I'm just going to put everything in here to heat it up because I don't have enough room by my stove. So I can't really show you how I, um, heat everything up on my stove. So we're going to do it right here. This does take about 10 minutes to melt down. Um, I don't put my 
crock pot on high. I put it on low. I have at times turned it up and it heated up way too fast for me and it got way over the temperature that I really wanted to, to cook with. I like to cook between 140 and 200 um, to match my uh, sodium. Um, and everybody's like, oh my God, that's too high. You can't do that. No, that is not true. <laughs> You can soap at a higher temperature. You just have to be really careful with it. And that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to show you how to do that process. So um, I'm going to turn my um, thing on low. I'm going to leave the lid on. In a minute or two, I will take the lid off because um, I because when I measure everything out, I don't want water getting into my soap. So And this does create steam if you leave the lid on, even though it has a vent on the side somewhere on here. Where'd it go? Um, oh, where's my vent? Where's my vent? Oh well, this all this lid doesn't have a vent. I never even noticed. <laughs> my lid does not have a vent. Note to self, leave it off when I'm soaping because it doesn't have a vent. Um, so anyway, yeah, this does not have a vent, so I'm gonna take it off so that it does not create steam because I do not want to add water into my soap that I'm making. I want it to be the recipe that I put in here. Um, that will help keep me having a very balanced uh, so, but for now I'm warming my crock pot up and so by the time I get everything in there it will be ready to go and it'll start melting fairly well. Alright, so I'm going to pull my glass thing here. I'm going to pull this, put this on. We're going to tear it out. My cat wants out so I'm going to let her out real quick. Alright, you go outside. Goodbye. Yes, it's pouring down rain out there. I probably went back in in about five more minutes, but that's okay. Alright, so we're going to tear this out. We're going to go to uh, Graham's. Um, cause the recipe that I happen to have is grams. Um, I don't need gloves for this. So we'll put that over there. I only, I only need my, my hands are completely washed and clean. Um, so I'm not going to worry about it. I have a really hard time working with the gloves cause I am so skin sensitive and any glove that I put on, even the, even the non latex gloves, I always end up with a rash or, or irritation. So I don't wear gloves when I do, but I do make sure my hands are very clean. I'm working with soap. And I want to make, and I do wash my hands in very, very hot water with Dawn's dish soap, just so you guys know. And so my hands are completely clean. Um, and there it is. So let's start with my shea butter. I'll put this in here. I don't need a lot of it. Uh, how much shea butter do I need? Okay. I'm going to grab that out. Where's my, oh, where's my spatula? And my scoop. All right, well, we'll just use the soap scoop here. And we'll just start measuring this out. So I'll tell you the ingredients, honestly, but I won't give you my measurements. Okay, so that's part of it. A little bit more here. I love this shea butter. It's raw. It doesn't... Oh, man, that was almost close. So just a little bit more here. Get this on my hands. Notice I have a towel beside me so I can wipe my hands off constantly. I'm going to put that in. How'd that get so high all of a sudden? I want one. Okay, 